Y'all come on in with the cameras, get close. This week on pay dirt, we headed over to my buddy's Skeeter Cotton. He's a beekeeper. I didn't sign up for all this, I can tell you. We've been talking back and forth about the benefits of bees and moving them over to real tree farms. I was gonna say put some more in there. We don't wanna give out. We're gonna be fine, right? I'm a little leery of bees, but we're gonna find out how dangerous they are and all the benefits. Hopefully I won't get stung. What's up, Skeet? Hey, Roger. How are you? Good, what's buddy. What's going on, bro? Ain't nothing. What's all that? Coming out here to check these hives. You want to go in with me? I see you got two of them, though. Well, I mean, I was planning on you bringing some up there to the farm. I didn't know it was getting personal with them. If we're going to take them it to might. the farm, you need to get in them. Yeah, let me see that thing. I like that safari-looking hat there. That's pretty cool there. I've, I have seen it. We've been talking about it, uh, getting some bees up there to the farm. You know, and, and I mean, I've read some things about the benefits of it and all, about the pollination, obviously, and then tell me a little bit, why, what, what's the benefits of me getting them at the farm? And I mean, you obviously is getting some benefit out or you wouldn't have all be fooling with all these bees all the time. So what's it going to do for us if I get some bees up there? Well, it's going to make your food plots a lot stronger and all your plants around the food plots, like the habitat for, for the wildlife, mm -hmm. it makes all that stronger. and. Uh, it's just you benefit a lot. Your food, your food plots will do a lot better. They'll be a lot stronger plots for your deer and all the wildlife. Okay, so they they obviously producing honey for you. Yeah, we get honey. We get we usually wait till about June, but or July end of June. But that Trump Tower right there is is working so good that uh we gonna we gonna pull some honey next week. What we need to do put about two hives per acre. I got you. And that's about average three thousand four thousand bees in a hive. Mm -hmm. You got male plants, female plants, and the bees will take pollen from one to the other. And it makes them stronger and, and grow more seeds out. They, they're doing the pollination work instead of doing natural with the wind. Mm -hmm. And they work all day, you know, like from sun up, sun down. They're yep. out there working. Now, I ain't much on getting stung. Now, how aggressive are them bees? You, you don't have to worry about getting stung out there. They, they, they're not worried about you. All they worry about is working. I got you. And uh, taking nectar back to the hive, pollen back to the hive, make their hive strong, make your food plot strong. So basically, if, unless you just went up there and messed with one of them hives, yeah. they're not going to bother you. I mean, unless you get them, like I've been stung, but really and truly it's been like my fault on like slapping them or getting them in your clothes. And I yeah. guess they think they done got trapped. Yeah. Well, it's, it's kind of like, you know, if, if somebody was breaking in your house, you'd get mad, wouldn't you? Yeah, that's right. Well, you go to breaking in their house, they get mad. Now, is it true if they sting you that it, it kills them? Yes, it does. It pulls a stinger out of their intestines. Okay. And they know it. So they, they're not out to sting you. They're out to work. If you don't bother them, like going in their house or whatever, you'll be all right. All right, well, I guess we're going to go over and look at them. I mean, I'll probably let you do most of the work, and I'll just kind of stand back to the side because, I mean, I, I'm interested in them. Mm -hmm. And I want to see how it works, but I ain't into getting stung. But uh, I'm in. We're going to get some up at the farm and try them. Yeah, sounds good to me. Grab your veil, and I'll go get the smoker. We'll go in. Let's do it. All right. All right, today we want to talk about your neighborhood of your hunting property. You think you found the perfect piece you want to buy. Now you want to do a little research about what your neighbors are doing because you're only as good as a neighbor in properties. You know, it don't matter if you've got a hundred acres or a thousand, the deer are leaving your property and have the chance of possibly getting harvested by your neighbor. That's a fact, it's just happening. You can do most of your homework with technology these days right here on the computer or on your phone. 
this particular program I'm using, you can look at landowner maps, you can figure out how big the tracks are around you and click on those areas, find out what the address or the phone number is for that landowner. Hey, maybe pick up the phone, introduce yourself, be nice. They, I'm thinking about buying land in the area. But there's so many things you can do right here on the computer. You can pull different years off different maps and see if neighbors have deer stands or food plots right on your line or, or maybe you know, where your deer will be transitioning to from your neighbor. So there's so much work you can do right here on the computer. Uh, pick up the phone, call your neighbors. And once you do all your homework here, definitely get out in the field, go knock on some doors, talk to some locals. Um, I've even looked people up on Facebook and Instagram once I found them on here, looked at their deer pictures and found out, hey, are these deer being taken in the area? So there's a lot you can do right here on the computer. So do your homework right here before you go out in the field. That's hooked. Yeah, make sure they hook. They all hook. Okay, take this thing. Wait a minute. Where's it at? See, this one will be in the back. Take this and pull it around you. Yeah. And wrap I got it around you. you again. Again? Yeah. Hi. I didn't sign up for all this, I can tell you. How many times have you been stumped? A bunch of them. That's right. good for all the riders, ain't it? Uh, that's what they say, but uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's get this smoker lit and we'll go over here and open up that trunk tower. Right. That thing's probably gonna look too dry. Get a few puffs. See how the smoke turned brown? Mm -hmm. That's when you got a good ball of fire going in there. I was gonna say put some more in there. We don't wanna give out. We not. We're gonna be fine, right? Yeah. That's what they all say. Did you hear me say? Hey, watch. Be fine. Yeah, watch this. That's <laughs> ain't that the famous last word. Yeah, watch this. Females are the one that do all the work. That's right. Basically. Every bee you see in the field is a female. The male bees are called drones. They're bigger. They do not have a stinger, they cannot sting you. And all they do is just mate with the queen. I got you. That's all they're good for. And at the end of the year now, the end of the summer, there's no use for them. So all them queens, they're gonna, they gonna keep the drones out. Uh -huh. You'll see a, a swarm of drones and they don't really don't have nowhere to go. All right, let's I go. Well, I like the drones if they ain't got stingers. Okay, what we're gonna do, give them a little puff up in the front here. Not much, just a little smoke. You hear them pick up the activity in there? And you come up around. Mm -hmm. Right here, this is called the inner cover. Uh -oh. Y'all come on in with the cameras, get close. Ain't no even standing back there. There's a bug up there. All right, you see how I got this screen wire? Yeah. That keeps things from coming in. You have to have this groove in the back for ventilation. Mm -hmm. This is called the inner cover. It goes on top of it. Put the screen wire on it. No little bugs can go in there. In other words, it keeps everything out. With the, these hives being sitting in, in the direct sunlight, it's good for them. It keeps your hive beetles down. Mm -hmm. All right, you want to put a little puff of smoke in there, Roger? I'll put two or three. Okay. I'm going to close it right there for just a second. Okay. Now, so the, the most of the honey's at the top. Eh, yeah, no. Bees work up. Okay, at the from, bottom then. Yeah, like this is the brood chamber on the bottom. Mm -hmm. That's for your queen to lay her eggs. This is the food chamber right here. And when they fill this chamber up, you start adding supers on. I got it. But you. you never never take the honey out of this one. At the end of the year, this has to be a full super of honey for them to live on in the winter. I got you. Plus, you, you know, I always feed mine in the winter. Okay, that's what I was gonna ask you. They, they, they make the honey to to survive. I mean, that's what they live off of is that honey. Yeah. So you're taking that, but you're you're substituting it with, what do y'all put in there for them to eat? Sugar water. Sugar water. Yeah, okay. mix it 50-50. Yeah, they really not gonna bother y'all. I ain't gonna say that, cause they could. Well. But that was not full of honey. Yeah, they cap them off when it's full of honey? Yeah. It, they put, there you go. You see how that's, how they're capping that off? Right here where it's like white colored on it. Mm -hmm. They're capping it off. And see, this one's not ready to pull yet. But then we'll just set this one right here. 
we go in right here. Pull this next frame, it's looking a little better here. Oh uh, yeah. See that's just, that, they'll have that whole frame right there, capped off like that right there. When they do that, it's ready to go. So when you when you get that honey out of them cones right there, you actually you just scrape that outside off. Take a hot we got a hot knife, an electric knife, uh -huh. and just cut it. I then you, you take this little rake thing, rake over it real a little bit, then you put it in your honey slinger. Is that wax? Yeah. That's wax they cut there. Yeah. They're these are looking up. good in here now. And when all of these frames is capped off with honey. I mean, you can see you'll all get, that honey in there. Yeah, it's in there. It's, yeah, all that. You'll get mm -hmm. uh, two gallons of honey off an of eight frame. This week on Pay Dirt, our featured property comes from the great state of Mississippi. This 1,492-acre track is a true sportsman's paradise. Located in Kapai County, this track has excellent deer numbers and great genetics. There's also excellent turkey hunting on the track. When you leave the Highway 28 frontage, you go through a gated entrance, down a long gravel drive to an awesome camp right near the banks of the Pearl River. The property has almost two miles of frontage on the Pearl River, offering spectacular views. The property features a great stand of pine and hardwood timber, deer stands, food plots, a great interior road system, and there's even a cypress slough that would make for great duck hunting. This single large block of land has grown some of the best deer Kapai County and Mississippi has to offer. It's been in the same family for multiple generations. Being located not far off Highway 55, 40 minutes from Jackson, Mississippi, and a close drive from Baton Rouge and New Orleans, this track won't last long. If you like this property or properties like this, check out RealtreeUC.com today. They're obviously, they're used to being here. Right. So when you if we move when we move them to the farm, what what do you do to move them? I mean, because okay. obviously they they used to coming out right here, so you're gonna be they're gonna be somewhere yeah. they ain't never been. What we're gonna do? We we'll have to get these. We we'll get there late in the afternoon. Let all your work bees come in, and then on the front of the hive here, we're gonna put a moving screen. What they call it? It just you put it on there. In other words, they cannot get out. Right. And I'll run a strap over over the top of that hive and hook it to this, pick the whole frame up, and we'll take it to the farm, set it out at the food plot. We'll set it out facing southeast. Mm -hmm. And if we could have like uh, these trees here, a backdrop behind it to block the wind. Yep. And that really you want southeast is because normally the wind blows out of northwest, the cold air does. Yeah. So we'll have it southeast, and that way when the sun comes up, pointing right in there. When it gets above 42 degrees in the morning, they gone. They won't come out until it's above 42. Now how do, how do they know when they leave there to go out to gather that, okay. that pollen and stuff, how do they know how to get back to this? Well, the first thing we're gonna do when we take that screen off, we're gonna lay some, like some old dead grass, kind of block their entrance just a little bit. Mm -hmm. So they'll have to move it to get out. And then they know they're in a different place. I got you. Then they'll fly, some of them will fly off and come back. You see them flying around doing like a dance, you know? They're mouthing that out for them other bees to know where to go to. Sounds good. We're going to try it. But all this talk kind of might me want some honey. You ain't got no honey in there. Have yeah, you? I got some honey. Come on. Right, come on in the house. I'll get you some. There's some honey, Roger. That's it, buddy. Yeah. Local honey. Yeah. Man. Appreciate you yes, showing sir. me them bees. We'll get them up there. Can't wait to get them up there. Right. See what they do to them soybeans. Sound good. All right, buddy. Appreciate it.